Well, good morning, Hope Church. Welcome to Hope Daily uh, on Wednesday, halfway uh, through the, the traditionalized work, working week. Uh, we are just beginning our journey into Luke during this period of Lent. We've just looked at chapters 1 and 2 um, yesterday and on Monday with Josh and Jamie. Uh, and we're going to be continuing in chapter 3 today. But before uh, we get to that, I just want to tell you about... Uh, some Luke's Gospels that we have um, bought. So we've got. sometimes we, we give these out during Lent and we challenge uh, you to give them out to friends and family members and neighbours who maybe have been asking questions uh, about Jesus and about the Gospel and who you've had chance to witness to. Um, and maybe you just would like to give them a gift of Luke's Gospel so they can read an orderly account of the life of, of Jesus. Um, or maybe you, you're someone who, this morning who's watching who doesn't even know Jesus yourself, you're not a Christian, but you want to find out more, well, if you message our, our Facebook page, Hope Church Lancaster, we'd love uh, to give you a copy for yourself or to give to someone else. We have them at church and we're happy to deliver them uh, in the Lancaster area to you if you want one or need a couple. Uh, we'd love to give those out uh, to people just so others can hear the gospel and can read about the amazing story uh, and, and about salvation. Uh, through Jesus Christ so let us know uh, and comment in uh, if you would like one of those or message the page but anyway on to uh, Luke's gospel I'm going to read out the ESV uh, this morning but let me just quickly pray for us before we get into this passage Father God we thank you for, for your life uh, Lord we thank you for your example uh, and we thank you for this story of the good news uh, and your gospel uh, and Lord I just pray as we continue to look at Luke's gospel this morning uh, together or this evening um, Father, that you would speak to each one of us, uh, maybe even through a different part of this of this passage, uh, as people read it for themselves later on. Uh, Lord, would you just speak uh, through your Holy Spirit uh, in me right now, I pray in your name. Amen. So, chapter 3. Now, of course, we're not going to read it all. These are quite long chapters. Um, but I'm going to focus in on, on just a few verses uh, this morning. Uh, so, uh, let's read, I'm going to read from verse 7 uh, to start off with uh, and hopefully pr try and get up to verse 18. So and this morning, or, or, or this evening, <laughs> I want to just talk about how true repentance requires a change. So let's read verse 7. So he, uh, this is John the Baptist, he said therefore to the crowds that came out to be baptised by him, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, who told you basically. So he's talking particularly to the religious leaders and, and those that were kind of um, thinking they can just follow all the, I guess, the, the commands and instructions uh, that God had given in the Old Testament um, in on the, the face of things to kind of look to everyone else like you're acting differently, you're following God, but actually you've really not made any change to your life personally when people aren't watching you. They're basically being hypocritical and that's what John is calling out, particularly the religious leaders for but also the other Jews who were who were were doing that as well. He said bear fruit bear fruits in keeping with repentance. So don't just repent. That should change your life. That should make a change in you. And do not begin to say to yourselves, Well, we've got Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Okay, so basically saying, just because you're a Jew doesn't mean you're saved. You know, it's it's a personal choice and repentance needs to come. Not just, oh, well, I, I'm a Jew. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So if you're not truly repentant and there's not... A, um, and it's not true repentance to God and he knows your heart, he knows when it's true repentance or not, uh, then that tree will be cut down, you'll be judged um, you won't have eternity in heaven is the short of it and then he said, and the crowds asked him what then shall we do? and he answered them, so this is how when you are truly repentant to God this is how it should make a change in your life so he gave some examples and whoever has two tunics is to share it with him who has none so share with those who don't have as much and whatever whoever has food is to do likewise tax collectors so they were known for being uh, dodgy and um, tax ta tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him teacher what shall we do and he said to them collect no more than you are authorized to do so tax collectors would often collect what rome asked for and then a bit more for themselves on top of their wage so saying don't cheat people out their money soldiers also asked him 
This is Roman soldiers. Uh, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be content with your wages. So soldiers had a wage, kind of like tax collectors, and um, but they'd try and get more money for themselves by threatening people, saying, Well, maybe I'm going to hurt you or your family, or I'm going to spread lies about you so I can arrest you and put you away if you don't pay me. And then as the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptise you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. And the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then it goes on to talk about this fire. So his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So that's saying, the Holy Spirit... Uh, which is uh, which is Jesus, which is God in spirit form, and uh, which will come. Uh, this will separate those who know and truly are repentant and those who are not. So just like what they used to do is with uh, chaff uh, and wheat, so they were all mixed in when they were harvested uh, from the fields. Uh, so what they did was in the wind they would throw up the grain and chaff with this winnowing fork. Uh, the wheat, being heavier, would fall, and the chaff would blow to the side, and that. Uh, and then you've got the wheat separated that you can use with the chaff. So the wheat could then be used to, to make bread and all sorts um, and, and was good and was brought into the barn and kept and stored. But the chaff was uh, put to the side and was burnt. And this is talking about, you know, the, the wheat is those that believe and are truly repentant uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Their lives are transformed. Uh, they make changes to their life. They, they are truly repentant to God. Uh, and the chaff is those who do not, those who reject Jesus reject the Holy Spirit uh, they are going to be judged with unquenchable fire and then verse 18 so with many exhortations he preached good news to the people so until now prophets had spoken of this coming Messiah but true the gospel and the good news that we can be saved through true repentance and uh, because of Jesus Christ uh, was preached for the first time by John the Baptist now coming back to, to all these different changes that John suggests suggesting here uh, he he's basically saying that when you are truly repentant, when you're truly sorry for what you've done wrong, when we are truly sorry for what we have done wrong, that is not just an em that's, that should not just be empty words. That should make a change in your life to how you act, how you conduct yourself, how you think, how you speak. Now it's not saying it's going to happen overnight. Sometimes changes do happen overnight. Maybe you know people stopping taking drugs, um, or you know stopping being alcoholics. Um, the things can change overnight but often it takes a process by the power of the Holy Spirit to change us um, with a willingness that we have to desire to be more Christ-like because of what Christ has done for us because we're truly sorry for what we've done wrong we truly want to change um, how we have been living and that is a process of what's called sanctification so becoming more holy but it only happens by the power uh, of Jesus Christ but it starts with a true repentance a repentance to, to God uh, saying, God, you know what, I am so incredibly sorry for all those things that I've done that are wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I, I want to make a change. I want to live for you. I want to live differently. I want to live um, in line with your kingdom and with the teachings of Jesus. Uh, live a life that pleases you and honours you and brings glory to you, God, rather than live in the way of the world. But it starts with a true repentance. But true repentance is evidence is shown by changes that we make. You know, just like if you are, if you, I don't know, hurt someone by accident, or even on purpose, uh, and you say sorry, or oh, sorry, and then go do it again straight away, and then again, and again, each time saying sorry, well, are you truly repentant? No, because you've not made that change. You've not sought to do things differently to change how you've acted. And that's the same here. You know, true repentance, God knows your heart. He knows when you're truly repentant and what it, what that shows what is shown by that is how you act how you think how you speak not that we are perfect now we will do one day in eternity uh, if we are saved uh, as part of that wheat uh, into the barn um, but even now in our life now by the power of the holy spirit we can make changes and that is evidence that we are truly saved and that we are truly seeking to live differently Sorry, that's the postman who's just come to deliver post. Let me just pray for us as we come to the end this morning. Uh, Father, I just ask uh, that you would change us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that when we come to you in repentance, Father, you would make that change within us. 
and, and that we might know uh, your your true um, power by the Holy Spirit to to make that change to our attitudes, our thoughts, uh, our words, and our actions, Father God, and that they might be changed, so that we might bring glory to your name, we might do your good and your uh, pleasing will uh, in our lives, Father. Help us to truly come repentant to you. Uh, and to seek to make changes in our life for the good of us and for you and of all your kingdom uh, and for your glory's sake. Help us, we pray, Father, for we cannot do it by ourselves. In your name. Amen. Amen, guys. I hope that was encouraging and challenging for us as we go into today and the rest of this week and the rest of this period of Lent. Um, let your repentance be true. Let it be um, real uh, and, and let that start to be a change in your life, in how you act, how you speak and how you think by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, guys. See you later.